I think if one's considering what order to read Austin's works in, especially if someone is in the in really the lucky position of not having read any of them yet. What a wonderful position to be in, to be embarking on Austin's fiction. It, it, it makes sense to read them chronologically. She published these six novels uh, over the course of just seven years. Two of them, Persuasion and Northanger Abbey, were published only the year after her death. Um, so one could read them in the order in which they were published, starting with Sense and Sensibility. And that would make sense because Jane Austen, I think, as she was composing these novels in this extraordinary concentrated period, um, was responding with each new novel to the last one she'd written. Um, however, I think there's another way to do it. I think I would always advise somebody who hadn't yet started reading Austen to start with Bride and Prejudice, her second completed novel, but also in many ways her most accessible, her funniest, um, the one that has a really sort of electric heroine, Elizabeth Bennet, whose irreverence makes her unlike any heroine of English fiction before her and maybe after as well. Um, and I think anybody who doesn't like Pride and Prejudice almost immediately probably is never going to like Jane Austen. And then one could read um, Emma for its uh, um, rather, I think, more complex and subtle humour. It's the longest and I think the most complicated of Jane Austen's novels. Then perhaps Mansfield Park, which actually came between Pride and Prejudice and Emma, and which is, I think, the most challenging Austen novel because uh, she reacted against what she herself had done in Pride and Prejudice with this extraordinary and uh, um, a witty heroine, uh, Elizabeth Bennet, by creating Fanny Price, the most um, reserved um, of, of all her heroines and, <laughs> and the least irreverent. Then perhaps Persuasion, her last completed novel, which I think many people have as their favourites. It's the most melancholy and the most romantic of Austen's novels, the novel in which the heroine turns down the man she loves, but then gets a second chance. Then perhaps Northanger Abbey, which although it was published after Austen's death, was probably the earliest of her novels, at least in draft form, um, and is a playful jeu d'esprit, best enjoyed when you've already read some of other Austen novels. And then perhaps last of all, the one she completed first, Sense and Sensibility, which is a novel where she's still finding her way, finding her technique, still writing much influenced by the 18th century prose writers to whom she was devoted, like Dr. Johnson, and perhaps a novel which is only really relishable once you've understood the extraordinary originality of the novel she went on to next.